So today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you how to build the No ATU Multiband DX Commander Classic. But sometimes I'll refer maybe to the Expedition Kit or the Rapid. All are fundamentally the same, just different dimensions and uses, really. So if you're an antenna builder, this will be interesting to you, but you might like just to watch for the fun of it, too. OK, firstly, let's just briefly cover what this is. So the DX Commander concept has a number of quarter wave elements made out of wire that rise vertically from a radiating plate. And simply put, the resonant frequency is automatically selected by the very nature of the laws of physics. There's no switches or control lines. Each element works completely independently as a fan dipole might. Now, this style of vertical relies on some ground to be able to operate efficiently, which is why we supply some extra wire for the radials that go out on the ground. Radials don't need to be long. My holiday setup has 30 radials, and that's 10 feet long, about three meters. And I can work down to 80 meters quite happily. And for permanent installations, yes, of course, you can add more radials and increase your, your, your efficiency. Quarter wave radiators have a pattern that is superb for low angle takeoff, low angle, you know, great for DX. So the 40 meter element also works perfectly on the 15 meter band, 21 megahertz. It's a harmonic of 40 meters. And that gives you about an extra 3 dB of gain down low when used with a moderate ground. And the user guide is found here. It's in PDF format. I'll be referring to that a couple of times in this video. So what's in the box? Well, Loki wraps us um, corrugated cardboard in the pole. He slides it inside a heavy box along with a the wire. Then we also get the pre-drilled tapped aluminium plates. The tab is already bent up to accept the SO239. That's supplied as well. You get the ultra high molecular weight polyethylene UHM WPE plastic. They're plates and they're the guides for the elements. They also, the elements connect to them and we also use them for guying as well. So Wandy packs us the nuts, bolts and washers. That gives you everything you need to complete the project apart from some guying stakes and you get a few spares of odds and ends as well. So you should have plenty in the kit to make it. The DX10 wire, now depending on the kit, it comes with either a single run of DX10, that's 100 meters, 300 something feet, sometimes two reels, sometimes some of the kits have four reels, and the ultimate kit's got six reels. So the first thing we need to do is refer to the element cut chart in the instructions in the user guide and cut your elements. Now in this video, when I built the Rapide, you can watch me as I reel off these elements. I measure them out, fit the fork connectors, and also the loops at the end of each element. I haven't refilmed that because it's just me reeling wire off and putting loops and fork connectors on. I happen to have labeled these for a bit of fun too with some cube markers found on eBay. On this build, I used some colored tape. So now I've made the elements for the cut chart and I cut and made the radials as well. Let's go out in the field and get this amazing antenna working. Now, I normally use garden chairs or cheap DIY saw horses to support my telescopic pole. So you erect the pole by twisting each section, pulling it very firmly indeed. And by the way, a quick note, when you take it down, nest it in the right order, because if one of the smaller top sections should drop down before the others, you could end up shredding one of the sections as you attempt to ram it all back together again. So just be careful about that. The ground plate is held in place by the screw cap at the base of the telescopic pole and the driven plate, plate is held in place with a supplied hose clamp and some tubing. The plastic plates can only go on the pole one way. All right, the largest diameter plate goes at the, you know, further down the bottom and the smallest diameter holes go near the top. You'll find there's only one place these plates can go. Just slide them on until they stop. At the time of making this video, we supply a stay up kit with eight hose clamps and some tubing. However, very soon we will instead be supplying some 3N tape together with some special cable ties. This build incorporates this future style. Additionally, for serious permanent use, I recommend adding some self amalgamating tape which seals each join from the elements. I'm going to go over this self amalgamating tape with this 3M Temflex tape. In the future, this will be supplied with a kit as well. And once you're happy with the tape joins, 
I cable tie each join to stop the tape collapsing and the pole can't go anywhere. And you basically work your way to the end. I didn't cable tie the last two sections and I did this a few weeks ago, they're still up there. As I said, I colour coded my elements with the colour of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue and that sort of thing. And uh, let's just talk about the base. If you're building this with six elements, you will have a spare stud opposite the SO239. This is because I've built the whole pattern for either three, four or six equidistance elements. The spare stud would only be used in the four element layout. Regardless, it's good practice to make sure all your plates are in exactly the same plane as the spare stud. And I'm just showing you that here. Keen observers will also notice I'm using some prototype aluminium ground plates. These were made for me as a test with a push fit threaded insert. However, you'll use the six mil quarter inch uh, nuts bolts that we supply. I'm just testing these out for a potential upgrade in the future. Anyway, you thread the bolts in, gently tighten as a permanent fixture without stripping the threads. Just tighten no more is fine. I'm showing you this on the Rapide build, basically. It's a smaller version of the classic. Uh, you fit the stainless washers, the wing nuts over the top. I mentioned the hose clamps. So we'll still supply this hose clamp look at the base. Certainly whilst we continue making this style of plate set, initially you just undo the clamp, slip, slip over uh, some tubing, tighten it back up again, put it on the tube. That holds the driven plate in place and stops it from moving. So now the pole's ready, the plates are fitted, we start to string the elements up. So let's start with the 40 meter element and the user guide shows you where to start from, basically opposite the SO239. Push the element through the first two plates, but stop before you go through the third plate, the upper spreader. We're going to tension the element here just to help it, stop it waggling around. There we are. So we need to make a loop with the supplied glue line heat shrink. Make a sort of a Z shape with the wire and slip the heat shrink from the very end all the way down over the Z shape and then use a flame or a heat gun to hold that in place. And if you're careful and make this loop neat and tight, you'll be able to release it back through the holes when you come to take it apart. Now we use marine quality four mil, four millimeter, what's that, just under a quarter of an inch, black shock cord from Marlow and with some carabiners and that supports the element to the next available upper spreader. You'll find if you cut the shock cord with some sharp side cutters, you'll get a really clean cut and you can slip the bottom ferrule quite easily over the shock cord. Don't stretch the cord and then cut it because what you'll end up is a, a slight fraying to the fabric weave. Just snip it and the ferrule will go right over the shock cord easily. Then we make a single overhand knot, that's all required, and that will hold that bottom ferrule in place so you can clip the rest of the carabiner together. As a side note, we've just started shipping about one meter or three feet more shock cord than normal. In the latest batch, there is plenty here. Now we need to gauge how much shock cord we need on, on a per element basis. And I recommend you tension this cord to around 90% of its potential tension and it keeps the elements from wobbling about in the wind and I explain this pretty clearly in the Rapide video. However, in the event you tension the shock cord extremely tightly and afterwards you realise you need to shorten the element, say by 25 mil or one inch or so on, you're going to have some wasted cord because the shock cord is not going to be able to stretch any further. A temporary solution while you build I suggest while you test out your element lengths and tuning, instead connect the shock cord and one carabiner only to the appropriate nylon plate, and then temporarily connect the shock cord to the element loop without a carabiner, maybe with a bit of tape or a small cable tie, just to hold it all in place. Then when it's built, you see, you can go into the shack, check the tuning, make sure you don't need to shorten or lengthen anything, and then when you're happy with the element lengths, you can go back out, tension the shock cord up, stick a carabiner on it, and all's good. By the way, 40 meter is a different matter because as you'll see in a minute, that's easy to lengthen or shorten without any shock cord. So you can see I'm judging the length of this shock cord here. Then we just continue the 40 meter element up behind the clip and send it to the top of the pole. I do the same loop trick 
at the little double eye as well just keeps 40 meter happy look at the very top of 40 meters now you can see the element folding back on itself and this gives you a perfect tune on both 40 meters you see and 15. and you can either do it this way with the little tubing or some 3m 10 flex here and here's a tip if you want to ter temporarily fit any electrical tape leave what i call a field day tail on the tape so you can unwrap the tape easily later so let's see what we've done all the elements go up through the guide point to at least a mid spreader this is where 10 meters and 12 meters stop the railing, railing blah, blah, blah. the remaining elements continue up to the upper spreader here's uh, 17 here's 20 meters some people wonder why the fold back on 20 meters is longer you can see it here it simply means we've got enough space to connect some shock cord to the upper spreader so it's also easy to shorten just cut the fold back back we've already looked at 40 here it is again and you can see my test fit of the 80 meter element going to the little double eye i would use the five meter point not this one use that double eye for 40 meters and 30 meters only 30 meters if you're not doing 80 you get a choice with this antenna do i go 30 or 80 if you go 80 you hit the atu button you'll still get 30. this antenna shouldn't need an atu all right and another quick look at the top by the way it doesn't matter if there's not a metal loop here like the expedition model doesn't have a metal loop just use tape or this tubing which i supply right let's start erecting this pole now so i make one large step from an imaginary center okay 120 uh, degrees apart where my guy, guy points should be so that's three guys any metal stake will do you can buy that locally like in a camping shop or use some cheap angle iron cut the supply paracord into three equal parts make a little loop at one end and slip these over the stakes you can see i've already made a little loop in my cord here about one meter three feet from the guy stake that'll come in handy in a minute place all your cord in the center where the pole's going to go the completed dx commander isn't heavy simply place the pole roughly in the center of your guy stakes raise it up you can lean it on your shoulder here grab a bit of paracord push it up through the holes in the guy point put the paracord through these larger holes and back down to the little loop then all we need to do is pull upwards and use it as a two to one pulley. You can see me doing it here. A couple of simple half hitches will secure it. So you don't need carabiners and stuff here. It's actually better, in my opinion, easier to use uh, just a knotting system. I've already laid my radials out. This is for a permanent install. I've got a video about those uh, radials. I'll put that in the description. I've also made a few videos about radials if you're interested. I'll put a list of those on in the YouTube description. So there's 32 of them here but for holidays I use the same number just 10 feet long three meters in bunches of four you know six six or so. I think I used seven last time. Once we're all connected pop back to your shack plug into your radio and test it for a result. In most cases You'll just be happy and start working pileups. However, you may want to adjust some of the elements for a perfect tune. And when I say adjust, chances are you're only going to need to adjust it here. And you don't need a complicated analyzer. In the main, your rig will tell you where the dip is. You just go to this page. If you do a Google search, M0 MCX SWR calculator, you'll be able to download this excel spreadsheet and it'll tell you exactly how long or short you need to adjust your element and once you've done that of course you can head back to the field make the adjustment and then you can tie off appropriately your carabiners and shot cord huh. it's all done then right i used an old sailboard or windsurf mast to support my inverted l interesting tip though a 48 mil scaffold just under two inches scaffold tube slips inside windsurfing masks but you didn't know that they often come in two sections so you normally get your seller to to ship it for, for pennies you know second hand on ebay you know last tip lots of people are using vaseline to protect against the elements when it comes to the so239 works for me there are fancy silicon solutions available too whatever so what have we done i screwed in the bolts on the plates we cut our elements, made up our ground radials. We laid the pole down and fitted the plates. We strung the elements up and we made them tight with some uh, shock cord. That's it. Some people like to overcomplicate a lot of things, right? Not me. Let's just keep it simple. But don't take my word for it. 
pop it over to Eve ha- Eham and read what other people say, or join us on the Discord server, discord.io slash dxcommander, and join us there. All right? So enjoy your radio, enjoy your antennas, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.